Hey guys, welcome to In The Shop TV. This is a 55 Chevy truck that we're doing a complete frame off restoration on. And over here in the corner is a 75 Corvette C3 Stingray. That's my wife's car that's going to be kind of built into a driver. Today, here's what we're working on. This is our Chevy LS LY6 6.0. 363 horsepower from the factory as is. Of course, we're going to do a couple things to it to juice that up a little bit. Um, what we're working on right now is we're going to kind of strip it all down and get it ready to be cleaned up and painted. Um, it has glow miles on it, so we're not really going to get into the internals or do anything on it. Um, we don't need any more power than what we're going to get just by doing some simple bolt-ons and some tuning. So the plan is immediately strip it down. Um, I think we're going to wind up doing an intake. We're going to paint the, clean the box and paint it, do some uh, valve covers, new accessory drive and whatnot, and uh, just some basic going through it and getting it ready to pop into this truck. I've already done a couple things already. We've got the uh, exhaust manifolds off. That was the thing I was the most nervous about because those bolts tend to freeze up and rust inside the bolt holes. I was fortunate they came right off easy. And we just unbolted our oil cooler lines from right over here. We're letting that drain out into the pan. Let's start breaking the rest of it down together. So I have a plastic uh, Rubbermaid parts bin over here that I'm going to take everything off. I'm not sure what I'm going to wind up keeping uh, or selling or reusing, whatever. The last time I built the car was a 79 Trans Am with my son. And I got overzealous. I started stripping everything down. I just kind of tossed everything. Not really. There's a lot of people that are looking for those parts and I could have made some money back on my build. So smart enough this time. I'm saving everything that we take off this engine. We'll go through it. We'll clean it up. If I need it, we'll keep it. If I don't need it, we'll sell it. I'm just going to plug up these holes with some shop towels and also suck up any of that residual coolant that's in there. Next, I'm just placing some aluminum tape over these exhaust ports so nothing crawls in there. This, this dipstick tube right here was broken. Uh, that's how we picked it up from the junkyard. And I really can't get a hold of it to pull it out. It just kind of snaps into the block with an O-ring. It's like press fit in there. And um, I can't get a hold of it. I can't wiggle it. It's not moving. It's a little bit rusted, I think. It's in there really, really good. So I've started to budget by, I got a vice grip clamped to it, kind of bent it and mushed it in there. And I'm just smacking the bottom of it with a hammer upward. And it's starting to move a little tiny bit. So let me weigh on this a little bit more and I think we're going to get it out. There it comes. Let's see if we can do the rest by hand. Go. So here it is. Um, there's a little O-ring right here. It's kind of dried out anyway, and needs to be replaced. But that holds it in there um, and stops it from leaking. But where this tube is flared right here, um, you can see it's it's really kind of rusted up, and it was just kind of that's that rust just making contact with the block is what was holding it in. There's your uh, unofficial tip for the day. If you got a stuck dipstick tube, grab it with a vice grip, really kind of like dig into it. Um, and then whack it with a hammer. Um, right now, what we're doing is we're scraping all the loose flaky paint off and rust and anything that's on there. And uh, we're trying to get the engine just ready for paint. Here's today's pro tip. When you're vacuuming the shop back and you hit the antifreeze bucket with a hose, you get a mess on the floor. Don't hit the bucket with the hose. Uh, what a mess, guys. We're not gonna edit this till it's perfect and pretty. We're gonna show you all the screw ups, too. Go through 50 bucks in shop towels here. All right, back to scraping this block. You know, maybe we should move this anti through bucket first. All right, so speaking of screw ups, I've kind of screwed up again. By placing this aluminum duct tape 
actual tape for ducts, not duct tape. When I was cleaning this um, with the wheel, it kind of melted the glue onto the intake ports. So it's just got this goo that's just like impossible to get off. So uh, I'm going back and removing all this aluminum tape and I'm just putting some um, shop towels down to hold to keep it clean and protect it um, while I clean the rest of the head off. But if you, it's a slow process. If you peel the aluminum paint off, I found that um, engine degreaser sprayed very lightly around the intake hole and then scraped off with the scraper. It's getting it done. Live and learn. All right, we got this side pretty well cleaned up. Uh, no goo, it's nice and dry, super smooth to the touch. Um, I think we're good to go. This device right here is um, a block heater plug. This was a Northern truck, came from Canada, and we we're down here in South Carolina, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, thread that out. Ugh. All right, so we are finally ready to start getting some paint on this motor. Um, what we're gonna do first is hit it with a self-etching primer, kind of get like a, a light coat on there first. All right, so we just went over it with uh, an actual engine primer. Now you can paint over self-etching primer, but it's really recommended that you put an, uh, a different primer, an actual primer on top of the self-etching primer um, for the best results. So we're using a uh, VHD engine enamel primer, and uh, this is actually the, the enamel that we're gonna be using to paint too, is the same, the same product, so. Um, I think we're going to let this flash off overnight. We did two light coats. I'm going to do a little bit of a heavier coat now. And we're going to let that dry overnight and we'll come back and hit it with a color tomorrow. Alright, so it's the next day. We've got three coats of our engine enamel down. And it covered really well. Happy with how it came out. We are going to let this dry. Um, I'm going to guess we're going to let this go overnight. And uh, I think we're going to start masking everything off and prepping our heads to get painted. Um, so far, let me clean you know what we got going on here. The heads are gonna get painted because I can't get that aluminum back to how it looked at the factory no matter what I try. Um, it's, it's just, it kind of dulls and it doesn't really look right. I'm sure if I brought them to like, um, like a media blasting or a, a machine shop and they'd be blasted them or something, they'd come out really gorgeous, but this is a budget build, so we're gonna paint them. Um, I'm probably going to mask off, again, the uh, intake surfaces just because I don't want to paint on top of that. And we have new valve covers coming, and we have a billet uh, on valley cover coming. So, just pretty much the block got painted. Oh, the timing cover we're going to replace as well, and the oil pan we're going to replace as well, and then all the sensors. I'm sure we could bring it to a paint shop and have them, you know, blast it and do a super, really cool paint job on it, but I ain't that kind of guy, and I ain't that kind of build for this engine. The truck on the other end that's going in, that I'm not gonna attempt to paint myself. Nor that vet right there. I really should be wearing protective gear because it's getting a little messed up in here from that paint. All right, we're going out to dinner. We'll see you guys in the morning. All right, so it came out pretty good. We are all dry to the touch. I don't see any missing spots. Um, right now, we're working on, uh, we had cleaned our intake ports with some brake cleaner as good as we can. And I'm just taping them up with a big enough mast area so that there's a big enough surface that'll be just clean bare metal for the intake gaskets to mate to. All right, so we've got our first coat of self-etching primer on the heads. And we're gonna go in with um, some of the same primer that we use in the block. All right, there goes our gray automotive primer coat. All right, so that's our aluminum coat down. And um, I'm really, really impressed with that actually. It went on super smooth and I was not aware, but it has some, uh, with sparkle in it, which is kind of nice. We don't like a little bit of sparkle here and there. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I think that this is probably the most satisfying part of painting.
man, that looks great. I am super happy with that. Ugh, can't wait to get these ugly valve covers off of here. The uh, two-piece valve covers that I ordered online have shipped. I think they'll be here tomorrow. I'm really excited to get those on. Got ourselves a new billet valley pan coming. Man, that really came out good. I find the trick too, a lot of people will tend to like, when they put the tape down, they'll press down really hard and make crisp lines. Um, I find that actually pressing kind of gentle works better because if you get it down really hard on fresh, a uh, freshly painted surface such as this black, you can kind of tend to start lifting that paint. So um, just, you know, even pressure, not really hard, and it comes off really easy and doesn't pull the other paint off with it. All right, so I got my kid touching up a couple spots where there's a little bit of overspray. Um, not much, there's like two or three little spots, and then we're gonna go on top of that with the uh, VHD gloss clear. And after that, it's gonna be all she wrote. All right, guys, clear coat is on, two coats. I'm very happy with how it looks. I am digging it. That's gonna do it for this video. This piece is all painted up. In the next video, we gotta do valve covers. Got a ton of stuff we gotta do. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Guys, I can't wait to keep going on this engine. I hope you enjoy what we're doing here today, and I hope to see you guys back in the next video. Thanks for watching. You guys get to relax, but I got all this cleaning up to do. What a mess. See ya. <laughs>